things. <laughs> All right, this year the National Football League is celebrating the century mark. Yeah, but without an NFL team from Minnesota, the legendary Bears coach George Hallis called the best team, best football team ever put together. The league may not have become the juggernaut that it is today. Maury Glover has the story. When it comes to professional football in Minnesota, some of the greats of the gridiron come to mind, like Fran Tarkington and the Purple People Eaters at the Old Met Stadium, or Randy Moss and Chris Carter's aerial acrobatics at the Metrodome. But long before the Minnesota Vikings came to represent the North Star State, there was another professional football team in Duluth that was once credited with saving the NFL. What we love about uh, the Duluth Eskimos story is it tells this grit of football in Minnesota from the very beginning, right? Players that are, are willing to kind of put it all on the line um, and work really hard to, to create a great show for the fans and, and play some great football. Back in 1926, a promoter named Ole Hogsrud bought the struggling Duluth Kellys from the NFL for a dollar and convinced his high school friend, Ernie Nevers, who's one of the first football celebrities, to play for his team. But no one wanted to come to Duluth to play the renamed Ernie Nevers Eskimos in the cold weather. So after only one home game, they embarked on what's called the longest road trip in sports history. 17,000 miles to play 29 games in four months. Everywhere they went, they were met by crowds, right? They wore these sort of iconic Mackinac jackets, and the railway stations were lined with fans kind of cheering for them everywhere they arrived. Um, it, was, it was sort of the pomp and circumstance was so exciting. Um, but not just because of, you know, this great marketing and, and Ernie, but they were good. Chuck Frederick literally wrote the book on the Duluth Eskimos. He says the Eskimos were the first NFL team to hold training camp, huddle before a play, and wear a logo, an igloo, on their uniform. And their barnstorming tour of the country became so popular, the NFL commissioner at the time credited them with rescuing the struggling league from financial ruin. I definitely believe that. If it wasn't for the Duluth Eskimos, the NFL wouldn't be around today. They would have gone bankrupt just like so many other upstart leagues. You know, there was just too much competition. But after their first successful season, the Eskimos were left out in the cold. The traveling team only won one game the following year and folded in 1928. These guys are getting awful tired. There, there's lots of great stories about how they would shower twice after a game, the first time to wash their uniform, and then the second time they'd take off their uniform and they'd shower their actual bodies because they didn't have time. They were getting right back on the train. Hogsrud eventually sold the Eskimos back to the NFL with the condition he got first rights to any future league franchises in Minnesota. And when the NFL voted to give Max Winter and a group of investors an expansion team 30 years later, Hogsrud became a 10% owner of the new Minnesota Vikings. There is some lore that says that the reason that uh, the Vikings are the Vikings and that they wear purple, um, one of the speculative reasons is that um, Ole Hogsrud went to Central High School in Wisconsin, Superior, Wisconsin. They were the Vikings and they were purple. Legendary Vikings coach Bud Grant's father, Harry Grant Sr., practiced with the Eskimos. Grant donated his father's helmet to the Vikings Museum at their new headquarters in Egan. He'd make reference to football, mostly the toughness. You had to be tough to be a football player as opposed, say, to a baseball player, which took more skill. We kind of carried on the persona, well, we're from the north, we're tougher than you are, we can we take the weather and everything in stride. And Carter Rutherford leaves Princeton to play for the Duluth Bulldogs. What? A fictionalized version of the Eskimo story starring George Clooney and John Krasinski even made it to the silver screen. Well, that was a huge deal, you know, and uh, George Clooney and Renee Zellweger came to Duluth to help launch the movie. Uh, you know, they rode in on a, on a train car, just like from the 1920s, that sort of thing. So uh, I, I think it's just really, really exciting. I, I thought it was great fodder for a Hollywood movie. Nevers and two other players from the team were part of the first class ever inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But the Iron Men of the North's real legacy is the unique place the team holds in NFL history. And so I find it just fascinating that you know, this small, small town was able to have a team 
uh, and, and was able to uh, play such a pivotal role at a, at a very dangerous time for the league and keeping the, the league going. Uh, it's, just, it's, just, it's just something we can be very proud of. Maury Glover, Fox 9 News. What a story, and look at what it became. The Duluth Eskimo story is on display at the Vikings Museum at TCO Performance Center, along with many other pieces from the Vikings' storied past. Oh, love it. Those helmets. <laughs> Something else. They've come a long way. They have. Yeah. Both of us moms said the same thing. <laughs> oh, those helmets, the leather helmets. All right. Well, vintage.